first, though, more on the desperate search for a mother and daughter abducted on Tuesday after an apparent traffic accident outside of Philadelphia. We'll speak exclusively with that woman's ex-husband and little girl's father in just a moment. But first, NBC's Peter Alexander is in Upper Southampton, Pennsylvania with the very latest. Peter, good morning. Natalie, good morning to you. The last time police heard from Bonnie Sweeten and her nine-year-old daughter, Julia Ricosi, they said they were in the trunk of their abductor's car. But there was no evidence when they found that car a little bit later that they had been seen at that location. Now, we know an Amber Alert was issued for Julia. This morning, a critical piece of evidence was found. That vehicle inside, neither the mother or daughter. She loves her kids, and I know she's protecting Julia. That's all I, I know she is. Police say 38-year-old Bonnie Sweden and her 9-year-old daughter, Julia Ricosi, were abducted while driving to the doctor's office in their SUV. A 2005 GMC Yukon Denali, Sweden used her cell phone to dial 911 from the trunk of her abductor's car. She uh, indicates that she had been rear-ended in her vehicle uh, by two black males driving what was described as a 1990s black Cadillac. She said in the call that they placed her and her nine-year-old daughter, Julia, in the trunk of the Cadillac and drove off. Sweden told police the abduction took place near her home in Upper Southampton Township, but the cell phone call to 911 was traced to downtown Philadelphia, nearly 25 miles away. Early this morning, police found Sweden's SUV parked in downtown Philadelphia with no one inside. It's unclear whether there was any evidence of an accident. As police stood guard outside the family's home, family and friends expressed grief and concern. I don't know what happened, why it happened, but it was very shocking. Investigators attempted to track Sweden's cell phone after the 911 call, but it reportedly, Natalie, had been shut down. Bonnie Sweden also has two other children, Paige and Faith. The oldest, Paige, put a message on her Facebook page yesterday asking everyone to pray for the safe return of her mom and her sister. Peter Alexander, thank you. And the FBI is asking for anyone with information to call their Philadelphia field office. That number is 215-418-4000. Tony Ricosi is Bonnie's ex-husband and Julia's father. He's with us exclusively along with FBI Special Agent J.J. Claver. Good morning to you both. Good morning. And, and uh, Mr. Claver, if I can, let me start with you because I know there's some overnight developments in this case. Can you bring us up to date? Well, I think you've summarized it. The overnight development was the recovery of the car in Center City, of Philadelphia, around 2 a.m. Uh, that car was taken to the Upper Southampton Township Police Department and we'll have agents and detectives from there processing that car forensically today. This was the SUV, and, and what condition was that car in, and uh, what more can you tell us about the possibly finding the abductor's car as well? Well, we don't have any uh, information about that. I know that uh, some of the news uh, agencies were reporting there was a Cadillac found, but uh, right now there's really no information about uh, any Cadillac uh, being connected to this. Are there any, found. any new tips coming into the tip line there on, on the whereabouts of Bonnie and Julia? Uh, we're following up on a lot of leads. We are uh, getting some, some good information. Uh, there's a lot of leads we have to follow up on, and, and we've been doing that overnight and are continuing to do that today. Of course, uh, the greatest lead was that 911 distress call that Bonnie placed while she was in the trunk of her abductor's vehicle. What other information was she able to give you about the, uh, the abductors in this case? Well, there was not a lot of specific information given out. And again, because of the ongoing nature of this, w there's not a lot of information we can release about that right now. Our number one priority is getting this nine-year-old uh, girl and her mother back safely. Mm -hmm. That's priority number one for us. Do you think this was a random act? Uh, really, we don't have any comment on that right now. There's, there's no way to predict until we can get people who we can interview who were there uh, to get the first-hand account. Uh, it, it would be uh, inappropriate to speculate at this point. All right. Uh, let me bring in Tony now. And, uh, Tony, of course, you're the father of, of the little girl, Julia, and I understand that you spent the day on Monday with her, and I know how distraught you must be going through this right now. Tell me about your little girl. Um... She she loves the she loves the Phillies. She she plays softball. She's always dancing around the house. When when, when police she, called you and you heard what happened and you heard the news, I'm sorry. 
I, I'm, I'm sorry as well. When police called you and you heard what, what happened and uh, they told you about this 911 call, what were you thinking? Um, that this was not real. That this that this stuff you see on TV and stuff that doesn't happen to me. I mean, I, I didn't even. I, I was in shock. I'm still in shock. What about your ex-wife, Bonnie? Tell me how, I know that you uh, maintain a good relationship with her. How is she as a mother? She's a great mother. I mean, she's very organized, always on top of all the stuff the girls have going on. They're dancing and their softball and doctor's appointments, all that stuff. She's a very good mother. Is there anyone in your knowledge that would would want to do something like this to them? I mean, do you know, was there anybody who had something against your wife? Not to my knowledge, no.